Hello all, welcome to part 19 of API testing training series. In this session, I am going to explain and show you the different testing types that we can perform on APIs. So let's get started. What are the different types of testing that we can perform on APIs? So these are all the different types of testings that we can perform on perform on APIs. First one is mandatory fields testing. Okay, so whenever you start testing the APIs guys, generally you will start with uh, checking with the mandatory fields. Instead of providing all the fields, you will only provide the fields which are mandatory. Okay, so mandatory fields testing. Testing generally starts with these guys. Okay, so whenever you are given a, in API and you are asked to perform testing, first type of testing that you generally perform is whether with only the mandatory fields, the API is working or not. That is the first thing you will do, okay? That let's say there are 10 fields, okay? But in the 10 fields, only five fields are mandatory. Only the data of the five fields will be provided along with the request to see whether the request API request is working fine or not and giving a proper response. That is mandatory fields testing. Then we go for functional testing, guys. Okay, mandatory fields testing will also fall into the functional testing only, okay? Uh, there is no need to categorize this mandatory field separately, but I just put it because generally we start our testing with mandatory fields, but uh, it's part of the functional testing. Right? In functional testing, everything will pay, play a part, right? Here in functional testing, we'll check whether the API is functioning or not, okay? For functioning, we'll start with the happy path scenarios or positive, in, uh, positive uh, things first, okay? Positive tests first and uh, followed by the negative tests, okay? So all the different type of tests. But uh, first, happy pass scenarios and uh, negative scenarios and all those things we'll test as part of functional testing to see whether API is working fine or not with proper input, proper output is coming or not. Okay, that is functional testing. Then we have the usability testing, guys. Functional testing is all about working of the API, whether the API is working or not, okay, in a positive or negative manner, whatever we test, whether the API is working or not is as expected, whether the API is working or not is functional testing, okay. So you come and coming to the next type of testing is usability testing, guys. Uh, how easy is it to use the or uh, use and uh, use the APIs? Okay, will be tested here. Okay, the easiness of using the APIs is tested as part of the usability testing, guys. Okay, if the API is kind of uh, while using the API, uh, if you feel any complexity while using the APIs, like uh, very difficult to understand, very difficult to uh, use API. Okay. Uh, then usability is a problem in that case, okay? If the API is very easy and uh, we know how to use it and all, uh, with ease, right, we can understand and all, how to use it and all. Yeah, that kind of testing we perform on APIs to see how easy the APIs are used instead of being complex is called as usability testing. Then we have the discovery testing, okay? In discovery testing, uh, we'll verify the documentation, guys, okay? It's a verification process, you can say. We'll verify the document provided by the developers for uh, software testers as part of testing to see whether all the proper things are provided in the documentation, okay? All the proper things that are required uh, by the software testers for, 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 for performing the API testing are provided or not. Document verification, whether proper APIs and properties are provided, proper request URL is provided in the documentation. Uh, in one of the previous session, I showed you, right, there are different ways uh, Okay, uh, there are different ways in which uh, the developers can share the API documentation with the testers, right? Uh, there are different ways, okay? So uh, as part of this discovery testing, in whatever the way the developers have shared the API documentation for software testers for testing the APIs, okay? Here software testers will verify the document itself to see whether the required details are provided and uh, the details provided are in a proper way or not provided in a proper way, proper uh, methods, proper requests proper input, uh, proper output, okay? All those things will be proper status codes and all those things are mentioned or not in the properly pro mentioned in the document or not. Here we are verifying the document guys to see the how, how good is the documentation done by the developers. Uh, that is called as discovery testing. Then we have boundary value testing guys. You see in some APIs, right? When you are requesting the APIs, you may have to pass some values, okay? Uh, there may be some range of values or whatever it is, okay? So, if you go to software testing, if you have some knowledge, because without having the knowledge of software testing, people generally doesn't come to the API testing, guys. Uh, with that intention, I uh, I assume that uh, people uh, the people know what is boundary value analysis. Okay, is one of the test design techniques in uh, software testing, right? Black box design techniques. So what we do in that uh, we will create uh, first 
first uh, first there is something known as equivalence class partitioning followed by boundary value analysis in uh, black box de design techniques in uh, software testing but here we will perform uh, boundary value testing guys where you see if you have to we have to test the test the boundaries guys so for example there is a api request okay which can intake only the age up to 25 years of age more than 25 years it will not take so here as part of boundary value testing we'll provide the uh, uh, in the request uh, we, along with the request we'll provide the age as instead of 25 up to 25 is allowed right we'll provide 24 which is on the boundary uh, one, uh, one one number less than 25 that is 24 uh, on the boundary we have the number 25 age we'll also test the api with 25 age and also we'll provide some number which is greater than 25 that is 26 and see whether it is working fine or not it should it should not accept 26 guys okay 24 25 should be accepted but 26 should not be accepted one one example i gave you guys so that is okay we have to test the boundaries while testing the apis okay so there are different types of boundaries and all uh, let's not dig deep but uh, boundary value testing need to be performed on APIs. Proper error and status are tested, okay? Whenever you request a URL, guys, uh, you will get a response. Along with the uh, response, you will get get some status or some kind of uh, status codes you will get like a 401 bad request, such kind of status you will get, guys, okay? So if, the, if that is expected, that's okay, okay? But proper errors are displayed or not. In the response also, uh, email address is missing, password is missing, like that some messages will come. Some error messages will come those proper error messages are coming or not and proper status are coming or not on uh if you give everything good like valid email address valid password and valid request and valid method test method and all those stuff and if you are getting a proper response and 200 okay that's fine but if you are giving something invalid and all you have to give different you, you should get different status and proper message should come okay that we have to test as part of this uh using valid data invalid data and uh, valid and invalid details we'll check this okay so practically i'll show you guys okay all this uh, all these things i'll practically show you okay uh, i I'll, I'll give a practical demonstration using the postman tool like how to perform api uh, testing of the apis okay with valid and invalid kind of sets of data and all those stuff okay in the coming sessions till then uh, just this is a high level session which talks about how, which types of testings can be performed on apis such it okay uh, then security testing guys security testing is also important uh, uh, we have to evaluate the security of the apis you see um there may be some vulnerabilities okay so uh, without giving a proper email address and password if the uh, if if uh, any hacker is able to use the api and uh, uh, can get a uh, token to log into the application with invalid credentials that is a problem right that is a security problem okay so all those kind of stuff we'll be checking here okay so we'll check whether uh, the security is good or not no matter how many times you give the wrong pass password, the API is being uh, accepted, let's say. That is another problem, right? So only some sometimes uh, wrong password should be allowed. For example, if you go to any ATM and put your card there, and after three times, your card will be blocked for next 24 hours. Till then, you cannot use, right? There is a limit for giving invalid, invalid uh, data here. Same thing should apply for security also, okay? Token should only be generated. Okay, uh, for that number of uh, limit of attempts. Okay, within that attempts only, the token can be generated. Out of that attempts, token should not be generated. Then we have interoperability testing, where API goes through multiple components and servers, guys. Okay, it's uh, not a single. Sometimes what happens is client will generate a request and uh, that request will go to one server and uh, uh, from that server to any third party server or any other server it will go. And finally, response will come back to the client. But uh, whether this, all the servers which are uh, meant for uh, solve, uh, giving a proper response to the client back are working properly or not. That is interoperability testing. Then automation testing is automation plays a key role in API testing uh, because you see for every version of the build, okay, the software developers will give for software testers for testing. We have to run all the APIs, okay? We have to run all the APIs. So if you automate these APIs, right, with a single click, all the APIs can be run and we can get the results and that too in very less time because there is no UI involved. API testing, uh, execution will happen very fast, okay? So along with the U UI automation, we'll, we'll also automate the APIs, okay? We also automate the APIs. So by scripting some code, by writing some automation code for the APIs and uh, continuous execution of tests will happen. Like for every version of the software that is given by the software developers for testing, right? We run the test and uh, we get the results to see which API is uh, failing. Earlier working API may not work in the next version of the build. So such kind of problems can be detected very easily with automation testing and within less time, there is an advantage in automating the API test, okay?
So then performance testing, guys, apart from security testing, we'll also perform performance testing because you see, uh, if you go to any application like e-commerce e application and uh, there is a product and there is a sale on this application, uh, big, big, big billion day sale or something, Amazon sale or whatever it is, okay, summer sale or whatever it is. On that day, what happens due to the offers, a lot of people will come into the website and they uh, try to purchase the product from the websites, okay? So a lot of requests will be happening parallelly, simultaneous, okay? A lot of requests will be hitting the server of the Amazon or whatever it is, okay? API requests will be hitting the server simultaneously and server has to simultaneously process all these requests. So the load increases, okay? It's only not about load, guys. Uh, sudden spike in number of people using the application or uh, endurance, you can say. There are different types of performance testing, guys. Uh, we have to verify different types of uh, testing under performance testing. Performance testing itself has a lot of types, okay? Based on the data, based on the... Uh, volume testing is there okay the different types of api performance testings we have to perform i don't want to dig deep here but at a high level guys these are the different types of testing that we can perform on apis like functional testing usability testing discovery testing boundary value testing uh proper response testing security testing interoperability testing automation testing performance testing, and there may be other testings also but these are the major ones okay so Hope guys, you understood the different testing types that we can perform on, on APIs in this session. So that's all for this session. In the next session, I am going to explain another API testing concept for you. Okay, and we'll go more practical in the coming sessions. This is all the theoretical part so far. So see you in the next session. Thank you. Bye.